This is the Morning Swim Show for Tuesday, February 23rd, 2010. I'm your host, Peter Bush. In the Finis Monitor today, we'll talk to University of Arizona sophomore swimmer Alyssa Anderson. Then later in the show, we'll continue our week-long series in honor of Black History Month. First, let's go to Alyssa Anderson. She and the Lady Wildcats head to Long Beach for the Pac-10 Championships later this week. And she joins us right now in the Finis Monitor from Tucson. Hi, Alyssa. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good, Peter. How are you? Good, thank you. So what are you going to swim this week? Uh, I have the 500 free, 4 IM, and 2 fly, and then the 800 free relay, and then maybe a 400 free relay. So. See, when you came to U of A, I remember people telling me that you were a great mile swimmer. Has that changed? Um, yeah, I definitely, I had a pretty good mile coming out of high school, and I just fought with it a long time because I, I hated, I hate distance. So um, for me, it was more about enjoying what I was doing. And so, I mean, I had a good 500, and I just worked. I mean, especially with Frank, you can work on um, getting strength and shortening the races. So that's been great. Do you think that happens a lot where people sort of uh, don't really want to swim, maybe the mile, but they just feel like, you know, or their coach feels like, well, that's what you were good at in high school, so that's what you should continue to do, and the swimmer doesn't really enjoy it as much as they should? Oh, definitely. I see that a lot. Um, you know, you're, you're raised and you're brought up, you know, through club swimming and doing things and um, you get good at it. And then just people think that that's like what you love. And, you know, a lot of times that's not what you love. And um, I mean, I, I would love to be able to do breaststroke. I think that's fun. I just I'm terrible. So. Well, you're a good 200 freestyler as well. I mean, you made the, uh, the world championship team for the relay in that event. Uh, is it something, though, where you're still better at long course than short course? Uh, definitely. I struggle with the tuna free short course. It's, I mean, such a different race long course than it is short course. And for me, the walls and short course are definitely a weakness. So um, the tuna at NCs, you got to be strong. you got to be um, tough on those walls. So I am definitely a better tuna freestyle or long course. All right, so what's your best event then right now? Um... Probably the 500 free. Okay, because in the Pac-10, you're going to have to swim against Julia Smith in the 400 IM. Not yeah. very good chance to win that event. Uh, mm -hmm. 200, uh, 200 fly, I mean, you've got Elaine Breeden and some other great swimmers. So the 500, you see the best place to make your mark at this March? Um, yeah, I think definitely freestyle. I'm the strongest, and then that distance um, is, like I think, perfect for me. So... Okay, what, what did you think of what Georgia did in the SEC championships, going 1-2-3 in the 500 there with some very impressive times? Um, I, I think that's remarkable. Um, they've got a good group of girls, distance, distance freestylers. So um, that's exciting to see and then just more exciting for me to, you know, be able to race them and hopefully compete um, for a spot or for, I guess, a win. So. Okay, last year at NCAAs, it was sort of a, a tragic story for the Wildcats. You guys were the, maybe the favorites going in, a relay disqualification, and some great swimming by Cal and Georgia, reverse fortunes for you guys. What is different about this team this year, and do you guys think you can win? Um, I definitely think we can win. Uh, the difference this year is I think we have a little bit more of a fire. I mean, they talked about last year. I mean, I came in with them winning, and so they, um, they, were, they were on top. They were uh, the, the bullseye. Everyone was aiming for them. And so I think sometimes when you're, you're in that spot, you, you kind of lose your, um, your edge. And I think this year we're the underdog for sure. And so we want to prove people wrong. We want to show them that, hey, like, don't forget about us here in Tucson. We have just as strong of a team. We've got some really fired up seniors that aren't going to leave without um, giving it their all and hopefully uh, leaving on top. So, Who is the leader of your team? Um, it's hard to pinpoint one person. I mean, we have some great, we have, our captains are Annie Chandler and Jenny Forrester, and I think they've done a great job um, at really guiding us and uh, leading us this year. So, What is the... Uh What's the most difficult thing about college? Ooh. Um, probably, well, at least for me last year, was being on my own, uh, not having my parents holding my hand sometimes and uh, different things. So just learning a lot about myself and growing up and uh, making my own 
decisions whether or not to go to class or not, or to study for a test or not, you know, and um, just holding myself accountable. What, uh, what did you learn from your world championship experience? Oh, ooh, um, I learned a lot about what it takes, like just through watching, because I did a lot of watching. I didn't do a lot of swimming um, in Rome. And so I got to kind of just sit back and uh, watch what others did and what it took to, to be the best. And so um, I learned a lot about, uh, you know, looking at races, looking at the details, uh, just the mental aspect, the mental game. Um, and so hopefully next time, I mean, I don't want to sit back and watch. Next time I want to actually swim and uh, contribute. What is something about the way you race or the way you train or a specific set that you can do now that you couldn't do when you started college? I, I'm terrible underwaters and I think I've, I've worked a lot, especially with the, we do like a fly uh, set every Wednesday morning with uh, our fly group. And so I've gotten a lot better underwaters. I'm terrible at holding my breath. And so definitely have worked on that. And I think I've gotten 10 times better. And then just strength with um, pushing off the walls. like. I mean, it's pathetic how much I've improved because I'm still not very good at um, getting off the walls, but just that small amount has, has been um, really good for me. Well, who's going to win the Pac-10 championship this week? Um, well, I'm biased, but I'm going to say Arizona. Do you think uh, Cal, okay, so you got Cal, Stanford, USC. Who's a better, who's a better conference for women, SECs or Pac-10s? Again, I know you're biased. But looking at it, trying to look at it objectively. I'm going to have to say Pac-10s. I think that, I, that those, the USC, us, uh, Cal and Stanford, I mean, the top, like, top 10, definitely in the top 10. I'm not sure exactly the rankings, but I think we have more of the top ranked teams in our conference. I can sense you simultaneously going over the SECs. On, oh, let's see, Georgia, Auburn, Florida. Yeah. I, it's, I don't know. It's kind of a toss-up. I think I'll, it might I'll, be equal. I don't know, but I'm, <laughs> I'm biased. So I'm going to say back then. We'll call it a wash. Mm -hmm. Alyssa, best of luck this weekend. It's going to be a fun meet, and uh, good luck at NCAAs as well. Thank you so much. All right, that's Alyssa Anderson joining us from the University of Arizona. And when we come back, Bruce Weigel is going to join us once again with the story of a black athlete that made a mark in aquatic sports. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Josh Davis, and welcome to Mutual of Omaha's And welcome back. All this week we're honoring Black History Month in America. To help us do so, we've been calling on Bruce Weigo, the CEO of the International Swimming Hall of Fame. Each day this week, he's telling us the story of a different black athlete that made a mark in aquatic sports. And Bruce joins us once again in the Finise Monitor. Hi, Bruce. How you doing? Hey, Peter. All right. Today, the story of Charles Chapman. Charlie the Tuna Chapman, really another one of the great stories of African-American milestones in that he became the first person of African descent to swim across the English Channel, which was for a century considered the greatest challenge of man against nature. And even though the first time it was swum was 1875, and Mount Everest wasn't discovered until 1926, to this date more people have climbed Mount Everest than have swum the English Channel. So it's a real accomplishment. What, in what year did Chapman do that? You know you got me, but I think it was 19, in the 1980s, 1984, 1988. Okay, so in the mid-80s he did this. At he that, did in the mid-80s. And, uh, and at that point in time, well, as is still true today, but especially back then, I mean, there just weren't that many black swimmers. Well, Charlie really has an interesting story because in, in the 19, uh, I guess not too long after Mark Spitz was there and made his mark, Sherm Shavor, his coach, wrote a book and... He said that he envisioned sometime that there would be a black athlete who could 
duplicate Mark Spitz's feet. And Charlie Chapman up in Buffalo, New York, wrote to Sherm Shavor and said, I'm your man. And they arranged for him to go out and train with, uh, with Arden Hills. And Charlie trained out there, and, you know, it was clear, you know, that he wasn't going to make it in the pool, so he started swimming open water swimming and did some amazing feats, like swimming Alcatraz Island, all butterfly. And that was really <laughs> one of his trademarks, was doing these open water distance swims, doing butterfly for 20 miles and more. Talk about some strong shoulders. Yeah, the guy has it, and he's a heck of a guy. Very cool. Well, thank you very much, Bruce. It's kind of insight that nobody else knows, so I appreciate you sharing the story of Charles Chapman. All Charles right. the Tuna. All right, we'll, tuna we'll see you tomorrow, Bruce. Thanks. Okay, Peter. All right, that's it for the show today. I'm Peter Bush, reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.